So I wanted to do a video about a few concepts in genetics because I know a lot of people sort of struggle with the concept of epistasis but it's often because people sort of don't understand actually what, how a gene and the protein that it codes for leads to the phenotype that we observe. A lot of sort of the gene studies on sort of plants and things that you look at in A level in terms of colour and the colour of flowers and petals and that's generally because it's normally a, a relatively simple system compared to things, well compared to complex traits and other and, and, and it's very easily observable. So say there's a species of flower and you either get white varieties or red varieties, you don't get anything in the middle and it just depends on sort of the genetics. So in each cell in your body, you have two copies of each chromosome, or let's, let's pretend that we're plants. So we have two copies of each chromosome, one's from the mother, so this is the maternal chromosome, and one from the father, the paternal chromosome. And they both have exactly the same genes on them, so this orange bit here is saying gene AA is found here. And each sort of... Uh, so, and each chromosome will have a slightly different version of that gene, and those are called the alleles or alleles, um, depending how you say it. Uh, so, although they both have, um, both your chromosomes have the A, the sort of the big A, little a genote, um, gene there, but maybe this one has a big A, and maybe this one has little a. And these are just terms, so big A, little a, or whatever sort of letter it happens to be is just a way of saying that version of the gene, so this allele. So there'll be, between two different alleles, you'll have a slight variation in the DNA sequence, so maybe a triplet has changed or, you know, like there's a repeat or you've got an insertion, sort of like something's changed in the DNA between these alleles and they form slightly different proteins. I mean, the proteins are generally the same, they have the same sort of basic function, but they're just slightly different. And so when we look at um, sort of dominant, normally in systems, something is dominant is when the protein that it codes for is functional. So we have a protein here, an enzyme, that converts this colourless sort of precursor molecule into a red pigment. And so this enzyme catalyzes this process and when you have the dominant version it codes for um, a protein in which the sequence is correct and folds um, per, you know, per, folds exactly how it's supposed to. It has an active site perfect for this and it can catalyze the reaction that forms this red pigment. The recessive one is one where it's had su a mutation such that when the protein folds, it folds incorrectly and it's non-functional. So say, for example, you had an insertion near the beginning of the gene, then all of this stuff downstream of the gene is going to be all like, it's going to be like a frame shift. So all the amino acids might be different and then you get a non-functioning version of the protein and that won't be able to bind to this and it can't catalyze the reaction so it just sort of does nothing so it'll probably be made and then it'll be broken down because it's not doing anything like in the cell so when we have so we say that this is dominant because even when we only have one version so say our mother has it well our mother our chromosome from our mother had it but our, the chromosome from our father didn't have it so we'd be one of these two genotypes, we'd be big A, little a, we still show the trait because our functional protein is being made and it's working, it's doing its job. Normally we'd have two of them, but even if we've got one we can still cope and we can still make our lovely red pigment and get beautiful red flowers. Whereas if we get two copies, so say our maternal and our paternal ones both had the recessive copy, um, then we have no functional protein, we just have a mess. So there's no protein available to turn this molecule into this red one. So this gene, big A, little a, codes for an enzyme which converts colourless pigment, uh, well it's not a pigment then is it, colourless molecule into a red pigment and then depending on whether the protein is functional or non-functional is whether we get that phenotype. So if we have um, a functional protein then the trait is dominant because it's sort of, even when you have a non-functional protein because it's, func it's still doing its job we still get the phenotype. When it's recessive, it's basically just wor not working. So, yeah, here's my beautiful... So this is just a monohybrid cross. Say the parents were both heterozygous, this would be mum 
and this would be dad. When we cross, we can have these versions. So we can inherit both of the um, dominant copies, from one from a mother, one from a father, and we get red flowers, or we can inherit one from the mother and the little a from the father, or one from the big A from the father and the little a from the mother, and then we've got a sort of a 50% chance that we'll, um, that we'll just be heterozygous like our parents were. Or we could be sort of unlucky, unless you really wanted, you know, colourless flowers, white flowers, quite nice for weddings. Um, then we'd be little a, little a. So that's sort of just, that's just normal inheritance, and we end up with this uh, three to one sort of um, monohybrid cross.